Now, just on the outskirts of Santiago, Chile, we're looking at a landscape dominated by a native ruderal plant. That is a plant that's first to recolonize disturbed lands or lands that have been fucked in the ass by the human tumor, as I call it. This is Bacris. It's Bacris linearifolia. And uh, look at that, uh, this weird foam that's not like a bubbly, that's not wet, that's like a dry foam. It's some sort of weird insect that uh, it, it feels like kind of like a softer construction foam. Look at that. And then we got an ephedra up there. The rock here, of course, all seems to be uh, andesite. Named after the Andes Mountains. It's an intermediate uh, extrusive igneous rock. So we got Vichelia Caven, formerly in the genus Acacia. We got this very spiny and fragrant uh, member of the Mutisioid subfamily of Asteraceae. And uh, when I say Mutisioid, it's got bilabiate inflorescences, bilabiate flowers, excuse me. And what do I mean when I say that? I mean that when you look at the actual flower, each, each one of those little purple rods corresponds to a single flower. So there's four mature flowers inside this uh, flower head. When you look at the, the corolla, you can see it's got one, basically like a lip, like it's got two lobes up top and one lobe on the bottom. See that? Open like a little mouth. So it's bilabiate. In this case, it's trilabiate. And this thing is spiny as hell. It's got these spines on it. It's a very pokey plant. You can tell, so that gives you an idea that it's, uh, you know, had a herbivory pressure. Uh, in its evolutionary past. It smells really fragrant and those purple anther tubes are really, uh, they're really curious. Purple anther tubes, purple involucres. There's that spine. God, it smells good as hell. We got a couple different uh, drought adapted phabids. We got uh, an ephedra. We got a whole bunch of composite diverse diversity that is the family Asteraceae. Oh, it looks like we got a cool little fern over here. What's this? Oh, this is cool. This is a member of Pteridaceae, whatever it is. And it uh, looks like it's going to spore. I can see the spores coming off of it. The spores are all those, the sorry, the clusters of sporangia are those brown things. Looks like a looks like a maiden hair, like a dry adapted maiden hair. And this is a pretty disturbed site. I mean, we got Escholzia californica, the California poppy, which is invasive down here. Species of Haplopappus right there, Asteraceae. Uh, species in the looks like a, one of the Stevia tribe members, the Joe Pieweed tribe. Members asked Tracy, this is all Baccarus over there, the coyote bush. A lot of interesting stuff. The rock, of course, this looks, uh, it's igneous. This looks like maybe a, uh, it's a little bit, uh, it's either an andesite or the grain size is maybe a little bit bigger too. Might be, uh, might have, it might have uh, cooled a little bit uh, slower than andesite, but uh, it's some invasive mustards, invasive bromes. A lot of interesting stuff here despite the disturbance, especially, you know, when you know these lineages coming from the northern hemisphere and then you see the weird shit they've done down here on the other side of the equator. You know, it tickles your fancy. Oh, we got a calceolaria up there. That's cool. Let's go check that out. Okay, it's a little steep. There was a little steep coming up, but it's worth it to get an eye at this. This is the genus calceolaria, which I've seen in southern Oaxaca, too. That's about as far north as it gets. It's primarily a southern, and, uh, southern American and Central American species, but it's got... A zygomorphic flower, so it's bilaterally symmetrical. It looks like a little Pac-Man mouth. It's in Lamiales, the order of uh, sages, and uh, it's a pretty diverse genus. You can see it's got the opposite leaves right there. Pretty diverse genus in South America, all right, from the coast up to the to the high Andes. See now, you got those. Uh, you can see the sepals. It's got what is that? Four sepals, and then that that big yellow bilabia flower looks like a little Pac-Man mouth, like a little yellow snapdragon. God, it smells like California out here. Yeah, you know, we just, you know, we had a rough time trying to get the damn cell phone plan set up so we can actually, you know, have some fucking data connection when we're out here. We are in downtown Santiago. Felt mildly sketchy and criminal in a nice way. You know what I mean. Look at that facilia. That's a, that's a facilia over there, Baraginaceae. Probably a native one. A native version of a mostly northern hemisphere genus. There's an Onothera right there. Wonder if that's uh, invasive or not. But God, it was just, you know, it was, it was, it felt terrible. I'm not gonna lie, it felt terrible after a while. Ooh. So here is an ephedra species, and this is a female. Apparently this species is dioecious, because this is all, all th these, are, these are all female, post-mature female flowers, which of course now are fruits. There's the little black seed. Obviously going for bird dispersal. 
Uh, and then there was a male uh, behind me. And I only had one flower sex in the whole thing. Look at that. Covered in fruit. Apparently they got decent rain here. Or good enough rain. Ephedra, of course, is a gymnosperm. Somewhat closely related to Welwichia. The weirdo Welwichia from Namibia. Somewhat closely related to pines. Well, well, more so than anything else, you know, that's not in, uh, in the Needham clade. Yeah, you can see the Calceolaria right there finishing up blooming. You know, it really does feel like California. It's just like a southern hemisphere California. We're out next to a cold ocean current on the west side of a continent. A lot of similar uh, genera of plants down here, presumably from uh, migratory flight patterns of a lot of birds. You know, if you look at migration patterns, not many go east to west across the Atlantic, but a lot go from north to south or east to west across the Pacific, but a lot go from north to south. Uh, from California down here to South America. Look at this baccarus. Waxy, glandular, linear leaves. A lot of diversity down here. Way more diversity in the coyote bush genus baccarus in South America than there is uh, up north in North America. So there's a male. And then uh, I think all of them are dioecious. Then there's probably a female God knows where. I don't see any pistillate flowers on this. These all just look like males with those little rads. Yeah, look at this. This is all California poppy, which is not native to Chile. California poppy is extremely invasive in South America and probably elsewhere, too. Look at that Baccarus linearis with the little white stuff, the little white... God, walking in this anacidic sand really is hell. Look at that, with the little, looks like construction foam. What insect is doing that? We get a, we get an insect that does that the backrest in North America too. It's not wet. It really feels, listen to that, it feels like foam. You see, definitely a ruderal landscape. And a backrest is doing so well. And so are a lot of the uh, mimosoids, the vichelias. The Neltuma, we seen a mesquite back there. A lot of invasive uh, California poppy. What else do we got? Some of the same invasives you get in California too. Some of these grasses, these invasive European grasses. I know them from uh, my stint in California. This looks like a Pseudonephalium species. Oh yeah, it is, I can smell it. They smell great. They're in the paper daisy tribe, Nephali of Asteraceae. Look at this beautiful, look at his rocks. Definitely a spot, if I lived there, this would be a spot I'd be backing my truck up to steal rocks. Yeah, you could be somewhere in Southern California, you know? <laughs> it's amazing. Look at this, here we've got an eight foot tall, multi-branched shrub lobelia, lobelia excelsa. Get those distinct lobeliaceous flowers. You ever look up close at a lobelia flower? We get Lobelia cardinalis in much of the United States, Midwest and East Coast, and the South. You got that fused anther tube, just like you do in the sunflower family, Asteraceae. Look how hairy that shit is, too. Hairy, and then you got a pollen presenter, a bifid style pushing out of that thing. And it uh, looks like you got some nectar on there as well, which is not surprising because this is a hummingbird pollinated. Definitely hummingbird pollinated. And then, so this style comes out, the anthers, instead of facing out like they do in a, quote, normal flower, in a lobelia flower, the anthers face in. The pollen side of the anther is facing inward. The style comes out, pushes pushes the pollen out. The secondary pollen presentation, that's actually a term for that. A number of plants do that, though it is pretty rare. Uh, it's, you know, comparatively speaking. Pushes the pollen out, so it's male first, and then later that style opens up and becomes receptive to pollen. It becomes bifid. And then, uh, and then it can receive, you can look at the texture of that thing, and now it's, it's receptive to pollen, and then pollen grain germinates and sends a pollen tube all the way down to pollinate the ovary that's in that lobeliaceous calyx, and then the seeds are absolutely tiny. So there's a giant one, which is wild, and then there's a shit ton more way up there. Look at that. An eight to nine foot tall lobelia. And that's actually, that's kind of small. I've seen lobelias in Brazil. They can get really big too, like 20 feet tall. 
So despite the invasives and the proximity to a city and how disturbed the site is, you know, the hillside being blown apart for quarrying, a lot of cool shit here nonetheless. Okay, we're gonna play a little game. Let's look at this and let's try to guess what family it's in, okay? You could look at these stipules right there. Are they stipules? No, they're more just like branches that terminate, you know, lateral branches that begin to form and then terminate into spines. There's the leaves right there. Look at that, that, that tri-veined leaf. Three veins on that leaf. All right, we're starting to see clues to what family this might be already. There's the fruits, it's obviously done flowering. Okay, photosynthetic stems, branches that terminate in the spine, tiny fruits that uh, seem like they got a hard, is this a hard capsule or a dried berry? Ooh, it's fuzzy too. So the flowers were probably small as well. We got three veins in that leaf. What family do you think this might be? It's from the general Gestalt. If you're thinking buckthorn family, that's right. This is Retinia trinervia. The buckthorn family, Ramnaceae. Photosynthetic stems, spiny branches, branches that just terminate into a spine. That's just a branch that terminates into a spine. It's not a prickle. It's not a, uh, a malformed axillary leaf bud or a leaf bud scale like you'd see in Cactaceae or a stipule like you'd see in Euphorbiaceae. It's a branch that just terminates into a spine. It's got that photosynthetic stem. Lots of buckthorn family diversity here in Chile. That whole slope just comes down so easily. Here's a solanum, a nightshade. You can see there's a couple, almost, it's got the habit of an elderberry, multiple branches, and then it's got those red fruits. And the big giveaway, of course, is the purple flowers right there, which have porocidal anthers. You can see they're finishing up. We're kind of at the tail end of the phenology here. It's Ch Chile's got a Mediterranean uh, climate, which means the summers are dry just like California and Western Australia and South, you know, West, uh, Western South Africa. And so the phenology here is kind of in the, in central Chile is finishing up. Look at, look at those, look at that calyx. Look at those sepals on top of those fruits. Bird dispersed, probably. Probably not edible. Maybe I'm wrong. I'll put in the captions if I am. A lot of solanums are, uh, some are edible, some are toxic because birds have different metabolisms than mammals. So a lot of things that don't affect them do affect us, but this thing is, it's just a man, it's a living bird feeder. Definitely remember this one from the last time I was down here. Let's play the family game again. Look at those leaves. We don't have any fruits, but look at the leaves. The leaves should be a good, a good enough hint at what family this is in. You can see it's got uh, tiny hairs on the undersides of the leaves. It's got a prominent red vein. The venation on these is really strong. Look at the top of that leaf is glabrous, kind of waxy. I'm not gonna touch this, that's the big hint. That's the big hint, what family thing is this? Poison oak family, mango family, anacardiaceae, cashew family, this is Lithraea caustica. Because it's caustic, that's where that species epithet. It has Eurushiol in it, and uh, sometimes you'll, you'll see the leaves, they got a little bit of black in them. I did funnel this last time I was here, and I don't, I didn't break out. Yeah, see, look, you've got that black on those leaves, see? Where something, some insect chewed it and then that Eurushiol oil and whatever whatever other compounds are in there uh, came out. But uh, but yeah, don't don't go don't go wiping your ass with this. Don't go final in this. I learned that the hard way with Comacladi in the Dominican Republic. A third of the plants in the family Anacardiaceae have Eurushiol. You get a real bad ass rash. An allergic reaction if you touch them. But those sumac-like leaves do look beautiful though, don't they? Look, here's a male, here's a male ephedra plant, ephedra chilensis. I showed you the female already, there's the male, that's what they look like. Oh, the stamens are withering, the dongs are withering. Are there any that are left? Nah, they're mostly done. Kind of, they do kind of look like, uh, well, witchy cones. You could see the relation. But you could see that just bracts and then peeking out from those bracts are the, uh, the microstroboli. They're not stamens because it's not an it's not an angiosperm. Photosynthetic stems, long nodes between the branching and then the the microstroboli, the little mini cones just pop out from uh, the uh, axles of the branches. Nice little patch of uh, Nicotiana acuminata here, native nicotine, native annual nicotine, which we get a few in North America as well. You can see these guys right here, obviously going for moth pollination. And uh, obviously, very, very glandular. 
Ooh, I'm getting all the oils on my hands. And again, that's where the nicotine, which is one of uh, many alkaloids synthesized by this plant. Wow, look at those sepals, holy shit. Lime green on the outside, dark green on the, uh, on the inside. Beautiful. But all those alkaloids, of course, are anti-herbivory compounds, and then those flowers. They're closed right now because they open at night for moths. Look at the leaves on this, too. This is nice. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take an herbarium voucher. This is a nice one. It's, pretty, it's ruderal. It's probably a dime a dozen, but I like this. And the seeds will be in there, and there's, they're often really tiny. And that's what makes this such a successful ruderal plant, such a successful native ruderal. First to colonize. I mean, this plant, it's, it's literally producing 10,000 seeds right here, probably. Because each one of these dry ovaries, these dry fruits, will have tons of tiny seeds in them. Now, there you go. See, that's all from one fruit. Look at that. You easily got, what, two or 300 seeds there? It's like playing at, uh, you know, guesstimate uh, how many... Uh, how many gumballs are in a bubble gum jar? You know, we used to play, we used to, teachers used to make us do in a grade school, kindergarten, grade school, whatever this shit. You know, I got in trouble a lot. I try not to think about those times. I got, I got penalized. Look at it, there you go. Senna candoliana, sesalpinioid P. Look how glaucous those leaves are, too. And it looks like someone's been putting rocks around, you know, creating little barriers. That, you know, it shows care and respect. That's nice. I wonder if it's the kids who's doing it. Just here on a sketchy cliff. Yeah, it's not that sketchy. I just, this shit comes apart so easily. Here's a cool stackies that Woody just seen. What the fuck, I just, I just lost a flower. See, there's the spent calices. The sepals, conglomeration of sepals. And there's the flower. Woo, it's got a big landing pad. Look at that. A little speckled. And glandular as hell, look at those hairs. Look at those... Glandular hairs, there's those leaves. Woolly as hell. Oh look, you could see the four seeds maturing inside that calyx. Look, it really does feel like Southern California. Look at that big pile of shit, that big pile of garbage down there. Congratulations. Look at that, look at the blue. That's a nice facilia. That's what you call a nice facilia. Huh? You dumb prick. Look at that, look at the hairs of the, the veins. Jesus. This always is, you know, the first time I saw a facility that looked like this, it was in Northern California. Different species, of course. It was in Siskiyou County. There's the inflorescences. All done, those scorpioid cymes, all done. Not flowering anymore, but they still feel like little bristly hairs. And there's seeds in there, no doubt. Great genus. Oh, it's beautiful out. What a nice day in Southern Chile. Anyway, that's all I got. Have a good rest of your day. Pay attention to the plants around you, even in disturbed sites. Pay attention to what's native, what's invasive. Those are the root root plants. That's what takes over areas that humans have uh, disturbed, bulldozed, done whatever the shit. That's all I got. Have a great day. Go fuck yourself. Bye.